What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the ultimate collection of Vault builds. That's right, builds, not just one, but nine. Vault is the most versatile frame in the game and can pretty much do it all. And that's why I'm coming at you with these builds. Now these builds come to you from someone who usually does endurance runs and is in that mindset. Along with the Warframe builds, I will give you my weapon combos and synergies and these synergies are put together to help you survive and keep up with kills. You can fit seven of these builds onto one vault, but I do own three and the two others are specifically for Eidolon hunts, but one of the Eidolon builds can actually fit on the main vault. Before I get into these builds, let me go over a few things that people get confused with. Starting off with his passive, where when he moves around, he builds up kinetic energy into stacks of bonus damage for the next attack. This bonus damage is pure electric damage and isn't affected by any mods, and the bonus damage is capped at 1000. His first ability does synergize with his third and fourth, but it is lackluster in damage and is only used during Eidolon hunts along with its augment. The second ability speed gives you reload, attack, and movement speed buffs. The attack and reload speed are additive to all other sources. The movement speed buff is multiplicative to all sources of speed buffs. Now the electric shield is where a lot of people get confused, so let me help. Any shots fired through the shield get a 200% critical multiplier and 50% bonus electric damage. You can stack six shields on top of each other and the electric bonus adds onto itself. However, the critical multiplier will remain at 200% and will not increase. The electric damage buff is somewhat similar to how it coats weapons with an elemental damage type like Zata's Whisper and Toxic Lash, but only when you fire through the shield. The electric damage bonus is additive to your weapon's base damage and does not combine with other combined or singular elements, so it's a separate instance of electric damage. The critical damage bonus when firing through the shield takes your modded crit damage and doubles it. And the bonuses are granted to guns, amps, exalted weapons that can shoot through it, and Exodia Contagion. You can also pick up your shield and move around with it, but you will be forced into your secondary weapon and your shield will shrink in size. But moving around while the shield is equipped will drain one energy every four meters. And this is also affected with efficiency mods. Discharge is pretty straightforward. Press four, deal AOE chaining electric damage that takes over time. Unfortunately, his discharge doesn't prompt the electric status effect, but you can combine with other sources of electric and it can scale from those sources. Like his first ability and weapons that proc the electric status effect. It's a very weak version of Heat Inherit. Now that's out of the way, let's get on with the builds. The first build here is a camper setup for those who pretty much want to sit back and have fun with your guns and probably watch Netflix on the side or great with a team camp setup. This build wants you to strategically place your shields in a way to keep you safe while having perfect view of incoming enemies and have enemies attack the shields because I'll be using the third ability augment, Transistor Shield. Damage done to the shields will be converted and built up to his passive, so he does not even have to move around to build up the passive. And this will be another addition to your damage output. The great thing about this augment is that only one of his shields has to take damage for you to gain the buff. And I subsumed silence onto him for the added utility and survivability. Because when acolytes spawn, this will stop them from using any of their special abilities. And any enemy who gets close to me will get stunned for two seconds. And on top of that, I will be using my first ability on the shields to electrify them. Dealing some damage to enemies who get close or try to go through the shields. Taking a look at the build. I have enemy radar and the aura. Prime sure footed for the knockdown and stagger resist because spending less time on your butt is a huge DPS increase. Just a heads up, this Exilus is going to be used throughout. And you may have noticed no power strength is even used on this build. Just duration with 278%, which gives me 69 seconds. Nice of shield uptime. Natural Talon is such a brain dead mod for Volt as his three and four cast time are horrendous. Rolling guard for the iframes and status cleansing, very good for when you want to go out of your safe zone and pick up loot and life support. Arcane Energize for the energy recovery and the last arcane is up to you. 
also using the Vazarin Focus School for even more survivability, granting you invulnerability for 5 seconds when you dash through yourself. And my weapons of choice are the Kuvich Akur and Vastalok. Vastalok is here to only strip armor paired with Shattering Impact. If you don't have this weapon, use the Sarpa. These are the only two gun blades that can strip armor with Shattering Impact currently. And I'm only using it to strip the Acolyte's armor since I won't be modding my main weapon for Corrosive. Moving on to the Jakur, which is modded for Insane Crits, Viral, and Internal Bleeding. As Jakur force procs mass impact, so we're always getting those juicy bleed procs. Since we're going above and beyond with crit chance, we are getting that crit damage buff from our shields, so we're going to do even more damage than usual. And the Chakor is an AoE weapon, so we can clear hordes of enemies pretty fast. Alright, moving on to one of the three melee builds. This is the one I released a while back where I fought against level cap enemies. And for more detail, you can go check out that video. But for a brief rundown, I'll be using two augments on this build. His fourth ability augment, which converts damage done to enemies with his fourth into shields and overshields. And I replaced his first ability with shooting gallery and using the augment muzzle flash. Basically, any six enemies killed while you're under the effects of shooting gallery will release a radial blind that staggers and blinds enemies. And the enemies who are blinded are susceptible to stealth multiplier damage. And shooting gallery can be shared with allies and they can also contribute to the AoE blind. And this blind doesn't even need line of sight. Alright, taking a look at the build, the aura is up to you, doesn't really matter. The power strength doesn't matter as well, since it's all about crowd control and dealing damage with your melee. The fourth is used for the shield regen with its capacitance augment, to easily consistently refresh your shield gate. Primed continuity for the 155% duration, bringing my shooting gallery to 46 seconds and the blind duration to 9 seconds. With 190% range, the effect radius of shooting gallery reaches 30 meters, and the blind blind at 22 meters and discharge radius to 38 meters so i'm covering a lot with just overextended muzzle flash for the blind prime flow for the large energy pool natural talent for the speed on his four rolling guard for the invulnerability and status cleansing equilibrium for the energy regen paired with the panzer volpophila Moving on to the Panzer build, Synth Deconstruct will have 25% chance to drop health orbs when killed if they're injured by the cats. Now Viral Quills will easily do that for me, and Synth Fiber allows me to pick up health orbs even though I am full health. Once I pick up health orbs with Synth Fiber, Equilibrium will convert the health orbs to energy if my health is maxed, and vice versa with energy orbs to health. And the weapon of choice here is Epitaph and Glaive. Epitaph covers more range since Glaive is thrown and detonated for the mass AoE explosion. As you can see, no damage mods, just elements and other utility mods to further increase the weapon's potency, viral and heat, and the weapon has force blast and cold procs. And Glaive is built for the heavy throne. I know that running both killing blow and amalgam overcaps the charge up, but that 15% actually makes a difference. It's got damage, crits, initial combo, faction damage, and volatile quick return, which increases your blast radius. Perfect for when you detonate your Glaive. Build number 3, our second melee build. This loadout is all about movement, stunning, and gripping up enemies while doing tons of damage. I'll be using a Zaw with this build. You can either go with a Dalkram Heavy Blade or Sephon Nakana, up to you whichever one looks cooler and feels better to use. I subsumed Breach Surge for the added crowd control and damage multiplier and damage instance. I cast my shield, pick it up so I can be mobile, shoot through it with a Nukur modded for viral and electricity, and since the shield also helps me proc more electric status effect and then i cast my fourth for the crowd control and scaling from the previously procced electric status effect from my weapon and shield combo this is when i use breach surge and melee to take down my enemies or just continue damaging them with the new core the surge sparks will take any damage done to the enemies and multiply that damage and send it out as a seeking radiation damage projectile a simple synergy for doing a lot of damage taking a look at the builds the staples are already there but in the aura i'm using brief respite for the 
energy usage to shield regeneration, which is also affected by your efficiency. This is helpful to reset my shield gate so it's at its maximum value of 1.3 seconds damage prevention. And I went with one power strength mod and that is Blind Rage for the 99% bonus power strength to increase my surge and speed multipliers. And of course, the damage on my fourth. Arcane Strike just for the melee attack speed since I'm using the Sephon, it helps me be a lot more mobile with on my attack speed, especially with the forward and block combo from Blind Justice. My weapons of choice are the Kuva Brahma, Nucor, along with the Sephon Nikana Za. My Nucor is bonus magnetic, modded for utility, fire rate, and the viral electric combo with the Dexterity Arcane, which gives me combo duration, swap speed, and bonus damage when I get kills with my melee. And moving on to the Brahma, it is bonus toxin, and this build is only used for killing Acolytes. Amalgam Serration is just there for the sprint speed. You can go with double fire rate mods or go for more corrosive damage, which I went with here. And finally, my Sephon Zom, built for bleed DOT damage, so it scales better. Carnage for the slash damage and status chance. I went with Prime Fury instead of Berserker because I'll be switching between my weapons quite a bit, so I want the attack speed to be there immediately. And finally, Exodia Hunt Arcane to pull in enemies within 12 meters after a slam attack, which can be achieved from your forward and block combo when using blind justice. All right, this melee build is very similar to the previous one, but I'll be using Gloom instead of Breach Surge. Gloom slows down enemies and gives you lifesteal from damaging them. Pretty basic ability, but it can synergize with a lot of other things. Similar weapons as well, but I'll be using the Epitaph instead of the new core because the Epitaph has guaranteed blast and cold procs with its quick fire mode. The blast status effect reduces enemies' accuracy and the cold procs slows down enemies, which adds on to the Gloom slow effect, reducing the animation speed even further. And taking a look at the build, it's pretty much the same as the Breed Surge one, but I replaced Blind Rage with Transient Fortitude to have better efficiency. And the Epitaph build is the same as the previous one. Okay, now the build that Volt uses for quick missions like Exterminate, Sabotage, Rescue, and Capture Fishers. This is the speed build. I subsumed Infested Mobility onto his first ability. This helmet gives him increased sprint speed and parkour velocity. The sprint speed bonus is additive to other similar buffs and mods. For example, just like the Charis Prime with its 10% movement speed bonus. And Volt's second ability speed multiplies all other sources of movement speed. Let's take a look at the build. I got a lot of sprint speed, a decent amount of power strength, and preparation mod for that max energy every time you enter a mission or forcefully resurrect direct from your down state. You can swap Streamline out for Prime Flow, this is just fine. With 267% power, I get a 2.34 times speed multiplier. I have the Charis Prime equipped and not going to use it, it's just there for its passive. And my main weapon is going to be the Kuva Brahma with the same build as you saw earlier. But instead of using Dexterity, I will use the Primary Merciless Arcane instead. Now for those who want to do ESO solo as Volt, this is a pretty self-sustaining build and was helped put together by one of my viewers. I have Dispensary from Protea subsumed onto his first to give me health and energy orb drops along with ammo. This ability will be synergizing with Equilibrium and Energy Conversion. Energy Conversion will grant me 50% more power strength to the next ability I cast, which stacks with any other power strength increase mods and buffs. This will be a better option to use since I don't want to go under 100% duration because his fourth ability needs it. Let's take a look at the build. Cursor projection in the aura, just for the little armor strip. Range at 235% with the use of overextended and stretch. This gives my discharge a 47 meter coverage. And to counteract the loss in power, I'll be using blind rage and of course energy conversion. Prime Flow and Equilibrium for the large energy pull and energy and health pickup conversion. And the weapon can be any AoE weapon. And here I went with a Kuva Brahma. And now moving on to the Eidolon loadouts. We're still on the same vault by the way. This build will be for the Void Strike Vault, VS for short. Your main focus is to have a consistent shield uptime to buff your amp shots and enough duration for them to be up, especially for pre-shielding. For more info about Eidolon hunts and strats, be sure to check out my Eidolon hunting guides and join the Eidolon Discord, since this is going to be an overload of information which won't be worth it in this video. But for the sake of the build, I will drop it here. I'll be using the same subsume as the ESO build, but will not have to worry about power, strength, or range for this setup. Dispensary is 
great for you and your allies. Taking a look at the build, I have Cross Projection for the armor strip. This will affect the Ailan's alloy armor. With four people in the squad, all using Cross Projection will bring the armor down pretty low, so your Synovia DPS shots will do more damage. Efficiency at 175% with rank 4 fleeting and streamlined. Narrow minded and prime continuity for the duration. This will bring the shields to 51 seconds. Natural talent for the casting speed since you want little to no downtime when in the hunts. Arcade nullifier for the magnetic status effect resistance, which is really nice during the sentient energy spike. Alright, onto the Eidolon Synovia DPS. This is being used on another Volt, which is primarily for Eidolon DPS and Profit Taker DPS. I have Eclipse subsumed onto his fourth ability because Discharge is useless in these fights. Yes, Eclipse damage buff does work in the Plains of Eidolon during night, and you get the buff from the Moonlight, as you can clearly see on the top right corner. But Eclipse is affected by the light intensity, so you won't get the maximum buff, but it is still a huge weapon damage multiplier and is better than Roar for the Eidolon hunts. Also, for even better light situations, be sure to use these settings right here. Taking a look at the build, it is mainly focused on power, duration, and survivability. This is a mid-max setup for the optimal performance as the main DPS. Anything else is copium. Eidolon hunts are a huge gear check, so don't cry about things. Rolling Guard is used just before the sentient energy spike radial wave hits you, so you can prevent yourself from taking damage and losing energy. Shock Trooper is the first ability augment that gives you bonus electric damage. This is like modding all your weapons with bonus electric damage which is going to combine with your modded elements or singular elements. Arcane Acceleration and Momentum for the fire rate and reload speed. You want as much as you can get. This will help with building up Sniper Combo for more damage and reducing downtime. For snipers, use the Rubico Prime, especially if you don't have a Riven. And if you're going for a Riven, you better roll hard or pay up to get the best stats and rolls possible. The Sniper is going to be modded for Heat, Damage, crits because the heat will combine with shock trooper for radiation damage. If you don't have a Riven, replace it with Argon Scope or Heavy Caliber. For more info and insight into the hunts, you can check out my Outlaw Hunting Guides. All right, finally onto the final build, Volts for Profit Taker. And this is using the same Volt that was used for the Adlon DPS. For more info and guide to doing Profit Taker, check out my Profit Taker guide. The weapons will vary depending on the frame and setup, so just keep that in mind. Why is Volt used here? Well, because of his shields and his speed. The shields give you free electric damage and critical multiplier. Don't use the Shock Trooper augment here, as that will combine with your other elements. A reminder, the shield electric damage is a separate instance of damage. That's what makes them really good here. The build is very similar to the Adlon DPS build, but I swapped out the aura to steel charge so I can have more space to replace Shock Trooper with natural talent, or just put another Umbra Forma. You know what? I might as well do that, to be honest. And that's it, folks, the ultimate collection of Volt builds. I hope you've learned something from this video and helped you become a true Volt main that you've always wanted to be. All right, that has been it for me. I do hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this video. And if you did, feel free to leave a like share and subscribe for more warframe content streams and so much more do refer to the description thanks for watching and as always peace